Hey, thanks so much for downloading our latest episode today. Paula and I agree that we have run out of things to do with our bodies. Also, all the dumb, embarrassing stuff that we do alone when we're playing pretend as adults. This and some ugly and awkward moments of the week. Thank you so much. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie? If we die, it'll be glorious. Paula? Here's your croissant, you fat fuck. Uncensored as always, it's time for the ugly truth. Welcome to The Ugly Truth. This is episode 397. Ugh. Ugh. We are Sister Sue Podcast. Wait, I thought we were getting rid of that. I know, I forgot. I we didn't know. even I, say I, it the last time. Yeah, you're right. And somehow we survived. This is our Wednesday episode. Now, I think we should be candid because there are some things that are going on that we won't, that we would traditionally speak about today, but we're not because we are recording a little bit earlier than Wednesday because dun, da, da, da. I have to go camping. <laughs> We're getting back the day we would normally record this show. So we're recording it a few days early. So the following show on our Sunday show, I will recap camping. I have to tell you, Paula, I'm having major anxiety about it. Well, Victor asked, he's like, is she going camping or glamping? And I said, I think think it's camping. We don't glamp. Daryl is a hardcore camper. And so we, luckily, he allowed me. And when I say allowed, what I mean is he agreed that I should have a nicer tent than what he sleeps in. Mm-hmm. And so I, I was able to order a new tent. So we're, we're going in with a nice new tent. And so that is making me better. We're bringing the blow up mattress. So I have something to sleep on. Mm-hmm. I won't be sleeping on the ground. I ordered these cute little lights that you hang in tents. They look like light bulbs, but they're battery operated. So there will be light, which is the other thing. But my biggest anxiety really is people. I'm so worried about mad men coming in and harassing us like i'm just i'm worried about it everybody everybody's gonna have a buck knife i was saying don't you guys have like giant knives or something yes and so i'm always worried that we're all gonna be sleeping i'm gonna hear footsteps that's my biggest scare of all i'm just so worried it's crazy i can deal with animals like if i hear footsteps i'll be like who the fuck is it yeah i have a gun i mean i i'll blow your fucking head off. i mean i will lose it i yeah. will lose it so i think i'm being a little bit over concerned i don't think it's going to be like that well it's i mean a very aren't you going to like a camping location it's yes, not like you're just you know pitching a tent in the woods somewhere right like it's, dad it's used to very, do it's a state-run facility <laughs> there will be families it will be fine but you know, my mind goes deep. And sometimes I get a little concerned about things that will never occur. But you know, that's just I'm paranoid sometimes. So that's the only thing that's keeping me up at night, to be honest with you, is I don't want to come across or some asshole who gets too drunk and starts wandering off. I just I'm not happy about the the prospect of that occurring. But I don't think it will. Well, and not only that, you're going like Sunday through Tuesday. So it's not like you're going over a major weekend or no, I think we'll be fine. But, you know, like I said, I... And school's already started. So, I mean, I, I really don't think anybody's going to be there. Anyway, so when we come back and record our Sunday show, I will fill you in on all of the filth. So hopefully, you know, it's a, I think it'll be a good time. It's only two days, you know, and Daryl... I said, are you still looking forward to this? I mean, you're going to be surrounded by girls. All girls who have never really been camping in their adult lives. We took the kids camping many times in our marriage, but, you know, they're all adults now. (laughs) So it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Well, I mean, he's only ever been surrounded by girls, Jamie. That's all he knows. But Man Trip, his camping has always been with men. That's just different. That's like boy stuff. When he's with his girls, that's a completely different feeling. Yeah. He's not going to expect you guys to, you know, go to the bathroom on commodes and... You know, there is a toilet, so I'm happy about Good. that. Are there showers or no? Is there no a shower. lake or something? Or we're lakeside, yeah. Our campsite is right in front of the lake. That's nice, so. it'll be really pretty. I know it's going to be beautiful. I just it's when night falls is that I get worried. So just have a anyway. big fire and you know, keep it going like naked yeah. and afraid style, and you know, <laughs> just, okay. watch out for bugs. 
or glowing eyes in you know the <sighs> forest <laughs> well you know i told you we went to dinner with our friend our he does our hair too neil we yeah and he goes just casually we're just we're just munching away on food and he goes so when are you guys going camping we're like oh da, 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 where are you going oh up here da, da, da. and he goes oh yeah i heard that there was a a mountain lion with her cubs roaming around in that area and i went why would you say that well, then you should say, well, it's family friendly then. <laughs> so I immediately started, you know, searching and Googling for mountain lion sightings. Was it true was... or did he just say that to be an asshole? <laughs> no, it was true, but it's been a couple of months. So hopefully they've moved on. So there you go. I don't know. I, I you know what? <laughs> if we die, it'll be glorious. We're not going out without a fight. Jamie, you guys aren't going to die. I mean, seriously, <laughs> you're in it, probably in like a parking space. No. With a it's, number. There's dirt and trees. It'll be fine. I And the thing is, is that I know I don't get a lot of sympathy because there's a lot of people on this planet who love to go camping. I'm just not one of them. So, you know, and I've done it. I've done the camping. I've done it. I've had bears invade my tent space. I've had animals climb in and eat food. I've been sprayed on by a flock of coyotes coming through. I mean, I've done it. I've done the real shit. I don't want to. I really just didn't want to do it again. However, one of our children has never been. And it's you. And it's because of me. And I'm like, okay, we're doing it. So you can say you did it. And she's really looking forward to it. Is she or is she like having second thoughts now? No, she's really looking forward to it because it's something she wants to check off of her list that she's like, yes, I've gone camping and I get to determine whether or not I enjoy it. And so this is this is it. So are there like activities planned or I don't know. (laughs) What do you do? What is there to do? I I don't know. I mean, are you guys going to like, you know, bring like floaties or like. I do want to bring a raft of some kind. Are you going to go fishing or? Yes, Daryl, want, we definitely are bringing the fishing equipment and I would love to go hiking. I would love to do the hiking thing. Okay, so you're afraid of, of nighttime, but you'll go hiking. Is anyone going to be on the rag? No, thank God. I just finished. Okay, I thought because, about you that know, too. That'll attract bears. I know. And I even Googled if there are bears there. Okay, so... I read this article or this this news story a couple days ago because this just happened and it was in it was in Fresno where it happened. I, I wrote this title: "We've officially become bored with what we can do to our bodies." Now we've seen all the modifications that people make. You know, they split their tongues to look like snake tongues and stuff like that. The other thing that is very from here only is these eating contests that people do. Oh, yeah. Didn't someone just die from that? They had a taco eating contest at the Fresno Grizzlies baseball game. It was Taco Tuesday. And so apparently this is an annual event where taco trucks come and they make it a big taco themed game. There was a guy who claims he had prepared, which I guess means he didn't eat for a whole day. And he was eating tacos common to... They were, he wasn't even chewing. He was basically just shoving these street tacos in his mouth and swallowing them because he wanted to win the contest. And God forbid it was some stupid prize. It wasn't even, I don't even know what the prize was. It was probably like $150 or something and uh, and like a trophy. Right. And so. They probably were more interested in, dare I say, bragging rights, but. (laughs) Right. So he choked himself to death because a taco (laughs) went down the windpipe and he died. And I was like, what this what re- does this a mother is- say <laughs> at a eulogy Paula, for I something like thing. that? I thought the same thing. I thought, what kind of stories will be discussed at his wake? Like, well, he lived doing what he loved. I mean, is that it? I mean, is that no, it? I would be up on the platform and I'd be like, you know, I'm really disappointed to be up here. <laughs> because I thought I raised my son better than this. I than mean, to have listen. choked on a taco at a taco (laughs) eating contest i have to say that i am not dismissing the devastation of losing a loved one but right this is completely unnecessary this is an unnecessary risk i just think about those foolish lemming creatures that sort of fling themselves off of cliffs because they just follow the herd it's like can we you can we use some brainstem, uh, some kind of cell in our brains that go? You know, maybe this isn't the wisest way to to go about entertaining ourselves. 
there is a man who choked to death in a sausage eating contest. And I thought, now that is something that you have to tell people. In your family for the rest of your life, Uncle Whoever died eating sausages because he shoved one down his windpipe on accident. Like, that's like, wouldn't it? Okay, see, now I think it would be cool is like, you know, sometimes when you're giving a blowjob and a guy puts his hand on the back of your head. I hate that. Okay. <laughs> if they kept doing that, but you were like choking. Yeah. And, and like, ultimately you died. There's porn that does that. But yes. God, the girls sound so awful. They sound like it they're they're awful. like in like throw up mode. It but is throw up mode. Do you think that guys like that sound? Is that why they do that? There's a whole genre of porn like that. I mean, I've heard from some people they kind of like the sound of gagging, but most guys don't. You want to know why guys like the sound of that? Because they think their dicks are so big that it's like, excuse me, I have choked on a a crumb of bread before okay please i don't need it it means nothing trust it means nothing really i have almost not been able to breathe because i swallowed a fry wrong i mean i've inhaled sweet tart dust that (laughs) went down the wrong pipe and i coughed for like (laughs) five minutes i thought i was gonna die my eyes were watering i've had a sip of water and have it go down the wrong throat (laughs) and almost die so trust me when i say if i'm choking during a blowjob it means nothing to you but i'm just saying can you imagine dying that way how would that go anyway i'm reading all of these stories about a girl like a girl choked to death eating in a pancake eating contest And I'm like, okay, see, this is thinning of the herd. Now, I am not dismissing that their families are devastated. Well, you know, the families were probably there cheering them on. Uh, Maybe. But to me, it's like this is self-inflicted. This is something that could have easily been avoided. And yet here we are burying someone because they wanted to win who ate the most pancakes the fastest. You know, I saw an extremely disturbing video and I wish I had never seen it. What? This guy was doing parkour on the top of like a, a skyscraper. Okay. He was hanging off the ledge of the skyscraper and kicked his leg back up to get back on the top. And it his leg missed and he couldn't get it. And so he tried again and he couldn't get it. And then he started losing strength. <gasps> Epically, he had to let go because he couldn't. And he died. You know, I think I saw that. And for what? Because for the social media, because someone was taking a video of you and you you were going to show off your parkour skills. Well, why? Well, you did it. And so you couldn't you you lost your strength. Your leg kick up onto the roof didn't work the first time like you thought it was. And And so you didn't and you didn't anticipate that you weren't going to make it and realizing that you weren't going to have the strength the second or third time. And so then what? You didn't have a backup plan at I can't fathom not having the strength to save myself, but I guess it could happen. I mean, obviously it happened. Well, if you're hanging off a skyscraper by the tips of your fingers, you know, (sighs) and there's nobody up there to help you. You're alone because you're an idiot. See, this is what I'm talking about. It's like we have officially grown bored with what to do with ourselves. You know, eating contests originated in the United States. Other countries don't do shit like this. That reminds me of a, we watched Richard Jenny the other day. He's like, the French come up with their croissant. Here in the United States, we fill it with bacon and egg and cheese and we throw it out the window into your car. Here's your croissant, you fat fuck. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. It's so true. It is so true. I hate it when I do that. What? I snorted. Oh, I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. So I read that. I'm like, well, of course it originated in the United States because we just have piles of food sitting around us. We have nothing better to do. We're so fucking bored that now we're just going to shovel it in and see who can eat it the most. Who can eat this plethora of of substance and put it in our face as quickly as possible and win 50 bucks. I have never had a desire to eat something never that quickly or that much of the only thing i probably ever stuffed myself with is like chinese food lard ass lard (laughs) ass hey but even he had a plan he did he was gonna puke it up and then he made everyone else puke this is one of those things that should go the way of the dodo bird i don't know why we're doing it 
I don't get it. Well, and like even some of the contests, like the hot dog eating contest, yeah. it's not like it's a hot dog with like, you know, relish and ketchup no. and stuff like that. Like they're literally dipping them in like glasses water. of water to like to get it down to like, con- like shrink the bun or something. And by like the that. way, death is only one thing that can happen. You can explode your stomach. There are people who have been, who cause so much damage to their digestive system by doing these eating contests that every time they eat, they throw up for like forever. Like they literally create problems that that are irreversible. People train for these things. I mean, I know how pathetic is your life that you train for a hot dog eating contest? It blows my mind. And the only reason, it's not like I didn't have this strong opinion before. Whenever I see that fucking hot dog eating contest come around <laughs> and that small Japanese man always wins. And then oh, there's I this American. Lady. Maybe you're right. Yeah. And then there's a, an American. And I know, I don't know the name, but I know a lot of people know the name. It's a, between these two guys every year. And they go back and forth on who's going to win the title. It's like the Nathan's one, right? And I think the American won this year and last year. And the Japanese guy's like, he can't do it. Like, he just can't beat this guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is this is what you're going to this will be in history. This is your history. This is your legacy. This is it. You eat more hot dogs than anyone. Who cares? (laughs) Why? (laughs) Okay, so that is upsetting. But for some reason, I think it's hilarious when i watched i think it was gloucester i don't know where that is but um, or yeah, uh, uk and they throw the cheese wheel down this really steep hill <laughs> yeah. and everyone tries to run and chase it but you know you can't run down a steep hill without falling of course not and so At i think it's I hilarious can. to watch these people try and chase this cheese wheel and they all just end up collapsing and rolling down this hill. <laughs> and like, not even just rolling, but I mean, they're like full blown barrel. Like, and then they video it and then usually they show it in slow motion. Right. And I think it's funny. But well, it's I hilarious. mean, it's not but necessary why? in life. No, it's not. And a, per- a person could legitimately hurt themselves. Most, a oh, lot of God. people wear, a lot of people wear helmets, but. <laughs> I would be more concerned about blowing out a knee or breaking my Something. ankle. Or there was the video I showed you not that long ago where it's the wife carrying challenge. That is the worst. <laughs> I saw that and I saw a husband. First of all, all these husbands, they look like professional football players. They're huge. Something. And their wives are, you know, 98 pounds wet. Yeah, so, they're I mean, like they're like pretzeled around their neck. <laughs> And the, I mean, you know, let's be real. Their heads are dipped down between their butt cheeks, basically. They're basically doing reverse 69. I don't running, know what they're doing. <laughs> running. And it's like, OK, let's see a real competition. Let's see someone like Daryl carry someone like me for a mile. <laughs> Do you then think you guys watching. would even be able to get in that position? <laughs> No, not, okay. not vertically. I know for sure if I ever was able to get on that position, and as soon as Victor started to run, I'd be like, stop, stop, I'm jiggling. <laughs> Don't feel me. I'm, I'm peeing. Hold on. My boobs and my stomach are flapping everywhere. He'd be bonking you on the the ground. Your head would be hitting the ground because he'd lose he'd lose his, his grip. I'd be like, be this is a family-friendly beach. This is a family-friendly <laughs> beach. Hold on. Yeah, never. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny because you know this is the same humanity where we've created you know we've we've had Shakespeare and Monet and you know Stephen Hawking and yet here we are dying and carrying cheese it's like the level is so dramatic from one to the other it's insane but I just I just looked at this and went you know what we really need to put this energy into other things than just shoveling food in our face. This is ridiculous. With the amount of food that we waste in shit like this, we could be feeding small countries with it. Like, this is ridiculous. Why? <laughs> What's the point? I don't, know. I don't like yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Everyone thinks everything's fine until, you know, something bad goes wrong. And then suddenly, yeah. you know, everyone's like sad or sorry or... I'm not sad or sorry. I'm sad for the family they leave behind. The thing I don't understand is no one like actually takes responsibility for their own actions. That's oh, the thing well, that gets me the most. Right. Is, you know, they suddenly want to blame somebody else. And oh I'm just God. like, they chose to ingest all oh, of Paula, that. Oh, Paula, the little girl that died for eating pancakes, her family sued <laughs> and won. They of won money. They 
And I'm like, you're nobody was shoveling that shit in her face. She was doing it. I know. I don't know. But, you know, it, you know, our mom, the insurance person would be like, well, there's a percentage of reliable of responsibility on everybody's part. I'm like, really? Like 99 percent of that responsibility was that girl signing her name, signing the release and shoveling silver dollar pancakes down her gut. I mean, what's the point of having a release and a waiver if you're going to get sued anyway? So it made me think about all the other dumb shit we do. Not in not with a crowd, but just in general. And so I wrote this. I wrote down this list of things. So when I'm alone, and my whole life I've been this way, and I I don't think I'm alone because when I share a ugly and awkward moments, you will see. I have you ever recorded yourself singing, thinking you you could do it, like Dang. you have a talent? Do you not recall like the thousands of of cassette tapes of us <laughs> okay. singing when we were younger? Okay, yes, but here's the thing. One time. And I was far too old. I must have been in my 30s. <laughs> oh, my God. And I thought everybody has always said, no, you can totally you can sing. I mean, I'm no Mariah Carey, but I can carry a tune. So I went, maybe I can. So I recorded myself singing a song. What song? I can't remember now. Oh, I think damn. it was like, oh God, it must have been. I, you know what? I honestly cannot remember. That's too bad. I know. And so I recorded myself. And I listened to it and went, oh, oh my God, I am not talented. Who said I could do this? I threw that thing oh, away. God. Paul has been promoting you for years. I know. It was, I'm like, I don't know who, what, what ear he has. He had you believing you were Nancy Wilson oh, or God. Ann Wilson. It was so bad. I just went, no. I, Cause I thought, Hey, maybe I'll just submit it to American Idol. You never know. Oh my and, god, really? Yeah. And so I and I was wow. I listened to it and I went, No, no, this is not my this is not my lot in life. I would be one of the embarrassing ones that they would film where Paul Abdul's trying not to laugh. Yeah. They're just like no. Jamie is a mother of four. Dog in, just recently <laughs> an empty nester and is looking for a new path in life. <laughs> yo, yo, it's a no from me. Paul Simon's just gonna be like, Well, um, you might be able to carry a tune with some training, but I just, I just don't see any future with you. Yeah. So bad. that's a, definitely a no for me. And I'd be saying there, really? <laughs> yeah. My stepdad says I sing real good. <laughs> I don't record myself, but I'll be on my computer with my headphones on and I'll be listening to like my songs. I'll think that I'm singing quietly to myself, yes. but not realizing that it's rather loud. Like one right. time I was totally in the living room doing the cumbia medley and <laughs> <laughs> Selena. And so I'm like, bitty, bitty, bum, bum. You know, yes. God of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so the other things that I have done in my, in my private time is when I put on my makeup, have you ever done a makeup tutorial? No. And that's really? mostly because I just feel like I don't know what the hell I'm doing anyway. So, so I'll go in and I've like, watched a million makeup oh, tutorials, yeah. I have but too. you know, the eyeshadow never turns out the way I hope because mm. it all just looks like a one blob when I'm done. <laughs> well, I've, I definitely do makeup tutorials in, in front of the mirror. I've tried the contouring yeah. and I just look like I have poo on my face. And well, it's not even about your results. It's just about because I talk to myself so much. So when I'm in the mirror and I'm getting ready for the day and I'm putting on foundation and stuff. And, and you know, what's really cool about the, this is the one cool thing about the time we're living in is I'm learning so much about skincare and makeup and, and I'm really loving it because I've always loved it. And so I'm I just love that. There's just so much out there now about how to properly care for your skin mm -hmm. and how to apply makeup properly that I think I think that's one of the reasons why everybody looks so great is we're all kind of even learning by osmosis. Even if you're not watching YouTube videos, it's just out there and it's so cool. That part I love. So well, I'll and be... the way the way makeup is like even eyeshadow, mm -hmm. it tells you like what steps you need to like where everything goes. Back when we yes. had eyeshadow, it was just like, you know, purple and white and, you know, black. Sparkly, and so yes. it's just like, you know, choose your own adventure. <laughs> and so <laughs> you didn't really like, well, I guess I'll just put this here. I don't know. Oh, speaking so. of, so the other night I watched a original episode of what not to wear oh my god it was from 2010 first of all 
things have changed so much in how we dress and makeup application and hair and everything. It was woefully dated. The concept w- is still valid, like how to accentuate your body type and stuff like that was good. Yeah. But like the hair and makeup was so bad. Wow. Then you know how they have to do it by themselves and then they have to be in front of their family. Oh, right. At right. some horrific restaurant somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Something that has a stairwell that they can come down. Right. And every single time they're wearing heels and they have to walk on this gravel road to get to wherever oh they're supposed God. to go to see the, the big reveal. And they always show like little spurts of them applying the makeup and like, well, I never really realized how much I wasn't caring for myself. <laughs> and, you know, they're doing the monologue before they show up and they're showing her using those little cotton, like little spongy applications to put on the 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 eyeshadow and all that i'm like man things things have changed so much if they did a what not to wear now i mean the makeup artist it was carmody of course and she was like i just want to accentuate can we talk about how beautiful you are you don't even need makeup but here's a hundred dollars worth of makeup yeah they wouldn't say that to me they'd be like can we talk about your dark circles It's like so and how just, I don't and, think there's a concealer in the world that will cover them, but we'll try. We're going to use <laughs> stage makeup for you because right. we think that's just the best way to go for this. We've, we've brought in some Bisquick, but <laughs> and this is what we'll call a putty knife in the industry. <laughs> we went so... to Home Depot and the uh, <laughs> the caulking is perfect the for wall, your skin type. The wall putty section. That's the color you are. That's the pale that we think will match perfectly. We got yeah. some wood staining that we think might help. <laughs> blend so the funny. color like it's so different it's crazy how much things have changed in 10 years for style and makeup but i will do the tutorials and then the other thing is because i love cooking i will do cooking demos when i'm no. cook- when i'm preparing food i'm like all right so this is how we whisk you know and i'll just do it no one's ever caught me yet but i definitely do it see the problem with me is because i basically have eyes on me at any given time Maybe not so much now that school's in session. Mm. Uh, maybe it'll get better. I, it doesn't matter where I am. I could be in the backyard. And I think it's just a, it's a, it's an adult way of playing pretend. And is what I think. Well, I think it's because I just don't have anybody to talk to. I talk <laughs> so, to myself. I don't give them to people. I'm alone when I do this stuff. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'll be talking to myself, or I'll be in the kitchen, and I'll be having a conversation. And Brian's like, "What did you say something?" I'm like, "No." I think you're I think you're living with a bunch of real judgy assholes is what I think. You're not allowed to do anything. You're being criticized every five minutes. I'd be like, fuck you all. I'm just pretending. OK, I'm playing. I just can't go anywhere, Jamie. I'm, I, I'm surrounded. I, I really am. I well, just, I just, like just, I said, I'll go in the backyard to have a smoke. Yeah, I smoke. Mm-hmm. And I'll go in the backyard to have a smoke. And, you know, 30 seconds later, Olivia will come outside. And she's like, hi, mom. What are you doing? I'm like, get out. <laughs> Even when I'm in the bathroom, the water closet, I kid yeah. you not, oh, I'll yeah. be in there like almost whispering to myself, talking. And, and Olivia, will be like, Olivia will be like, what? Mom, did you say something? I'm like, no. All right. Well, uh, speaking of that, you briefly tell me about the man flu. What is what's the deal? Okay, so earlier uh, last week, the kids and I had been out. I told you we did a bunch of school shopping. We came home and. Victor was already home and he doesn't usually get home from work until like 6 45 mm-hmm. and so I'm like that's weird and I actually didn't even pay attention but the kids were just like dad's home already and I'm like oh I'm like yeah he is and so we came inside he's sitting at the kitchen table in his uniform still boots on everything like that and he's kind of like panting or breathing heavily I'd be like what I would be like oh did did my poison finally kick in and the kids are just like, Dad, what's wrong? He's like, I think I have to go to the hospital. What? And so, <laughs> just, just listen. And then they're like, Olivia's like, Mom. She's like, Dad thinks he has to go to the hospital. I'm like, oh, does he? And so <laughs> I go over to him. I'm like, what's wrong with you? And he's just like, just my body hurts everywhere. Mm-hmm. He says, I have like this pain in my right arm. And mm-hmm. I have like this horrible pain in my like neck up here. And then right into my eye and um he's like i just feel so hot like i have a fever i'm like well did you take your temperature he's like no i'm already over it i said well did you take anything for it he's like well i didn't want to because if i had to go to the hospital i I didn't want to have anything in my system and i'm like okay i'm like well let's take your temperature and it was like 99.1 or something where is this going i said take this giant ibuprofen and i'll get dinner 
for tonight and then I want you just to rest on the couch. I'm just like, oh, I said, I think I know what's wrong with you. And he's like, what? And I'm like, I think you have the man flu. And he's <laughs> just like, what do you mean? I'm like, I think you're just sick, Victor. I don't think you need to go to the hospital. Yeah. The next morning, he's just like, wow. He's like, I feel a lot better. He's like, I think it was that cold medicine I took. And I'm just like, I'm like, God, you're an asshole. Totally. <laughs> he's like, what? I'm like, it couldn't have anything to do with all the things that I helped you with last night. It was the cold medicine that you took last night before bed. He's like, no, no, I appreciate all you did. I'm like, no, you don't. I think the theory is, and I've, I've talked to Daryl about this because he obviously gets very dramatic when he's ill mm. as well, is men don't like feeling different. They're, mm-hmm. they're accustomed to the way they feel every single day. They know the weird little whatever's like, you know, oh, yeah, this is that old injury I had. It, it flares up in the winter or whatever. But in general, <laughs> if they feel weird, they don't like they don't like change physically. Right. And so if anything has changed, it's significant. Whereas women, we're constantly changing like because we, we go through PMS every month. And so we yeah. are we are accustomed to feeling weird all the time where our bodies are never the same they change daily whereas men they aren't they're not biologically they just don't change regularly and so when something changes they are alerted to this and now they must take to their bed and die when really it's just a cold or the flu or whatever and so this morning he's he's like, oh, I'll take the kids to school. And he's afterwards, I'm I'm probably just going to go to the urgent care. I'm like, for what? He's like, I I think it's strep throat. I'm oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I'd be like, goodbye. I'm like, whatever. I said. Oh my god! I just, you know, these are these are things that you won't have to deal with for for much longer. There was one time Daryl went to the doctor twice in one week because he was just he was convinced that something was really wrong with him. And they're like, there is nothing wrong with you. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with you. What, didn't he think he was having like an allergic reaction to the cold medicine or something like that? I can't remember specifically. It happens all the time. I mean, not <laughs> daily, but I mean, every year we go through something like this. Like, even if he has like, okay, so there's this thing that happens to men when they get older. A lot of men end up with a sciatica problem. Oh, I remember that. He has to do his exercises. He has to do stretches. And he well, occasionally when it gets really bad, he's like, maybe I should try yoga with you. You know, but other than that, what he really wants is a pill and just to be 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 done with it. But it doesn't happen that way. Now, apparently a lot of men after a certain age end up with this sciatica problem. I know another Mm -hmm. man who was down for 11 days straight and he assembled a team of medical doctors to try to resolve the problem because it wouldn't go away. And it's wow. just time. And a lot of it is stress. And so when Daryl gets stressed now, his sciatica acts up <laughs> and he gets anxious every single time. And I and now I've grown weary and I give no fucks at mm-hmm. all anymore. So he'll do the thing where he'll go eh, eh. or I'll <laughs> see him like bend over or, you know, doing some weird stretch somewhere in the middle of some random room in the house. And I'm like, what's going on with you? And I'm like, what are you stressed? At? He goes, yeah, you know what? I. I'm just, I'm really stressed right now. And so, you know, the sciatica is acting up and I just, I would have just turned my head and pretended like I didn't see it. I just turned around and I just roll my eyes. I'm like, well, you do you boo. I've never met a man who doesn't overreact to illness. Never. I've never met one. Okay. So let's do some hugly and awkward moments of the week. Although the conversation didn't go as expected, because apparently you don't play pretend like I do, where I'm doing demos for makeup and cooking on my own. No, I get in I get in arguments with people. (laughs) Oh, you play pretend by hashing out arguments. I go back in time and I say things or I pretend that I meet them in the future and I say things that. I would say to them if I met them again. Mm, So you don't. So I pretend like they call me and say like, hey, what are you doing? You want to meet up for drinks or whatever? I'd be like, yeah, let's meet up for a drink. And then (laughs) like we're there. And of course, I look kick ass. And then I'm just like, so so what's your agenda here? Like, what what do you think you want? You know, like I know what you want, but that's not going to happen. And you have this whole monologue. You have this whole dialogue And I just like, you know, I. 
you know, I gave you the benefit of the doubt, thinking that, you know, somewhere deep down, you could be a decent person. But the truth is, you're just an asshole like the rest of them, you yeah. know, and I just like I go off you yeah. know, on this tangent, which is stupid because none of this is real. No. But in my mind, you know, this is all happening. I, I picture the bar. We're on bar stools. You know, it's <laughs> oh, you've it's, got the whole scenario. Like it's all there. Mm-hmm. It's all there. I know what I'm wearing. You yes. know, even sometimes I am wearing Christian lobby tons because I've made it. Yes. Like in life. Looks like we made it. <laughs> Left each other all the way. But I don't let on how well I'm doing. I'm just like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I've done pretty OK. You know, like I'm, <sighs> I'm, I'm humble about it. Yes. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so ugly and awkward moments, getting caught being embarrassing edition. And these are things like what we were just talking about. Like if Daryl ever walked in on me doing a makeup tutorial, it'd be embarrassing. You know, I'd be embarrassed. Or like if dad walked in on you pretending that you were disabled, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, that would be embarrassing <laughs> if that ever happened. <laughs> yes, exactly. As a child. <laughs> right. So I found three because one made me laugh so hard I couldn't help it. This one is funny. I don't know if anybody else does this, but I occasionally put deodorant in my leg pits so I don't sweat as much down there. Okay. I've never heard of this. My legs, my leg pits don't sweat. So that's not kind of weird. I, well, we're not very sweaty people. No, we're not. And I was walked in on while doing it. My pants were down, deodorant in my crotch. Oh, leg pits. Like, like the. Oh, I was thinking behind the knee. Me too. Okay. Oh my God. I was thinking behind the knee, but Wait, they were leg talking. Pit. That's your groin. Yes. That's not leg pits. Lady. Don't people like do powder up there? Well, not in your not the snatch, but probably the inner bend. Like the groin. Yeah. I mean, but I thought people did powder. I don't know. I, I mean, talcum powder. I don't know. Yeah. No, you know what? I don't think people do that anymore because it gives you cancer. If you're Gold a woman bond. for a woman, it can give you it, it, the powder will get into your your vagina and it will give you cancer. But don't you think deodorant would like clog pores and stuff down there? Probably like, no if, different. If you're, if you're a shaver and then you get like. I like, have never had sweat drip down my inner thigh. Well, like vagina acne? I mean, I don't. Vagne? Vagne? <laughs> Vagne? <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, I was walked in while doing it. Pants down, deodorant in my crotch. That was awkward and embarrassing. Well, who walked in? Her boyfriend. Oh. I don't know. I'd be like, get the fuck out! Well, you know what? Oh, this is so embarrassing. One time, it was when Daryl and I weren't married yet, and we had gone off for the weekend, and we had had mm-hmm. some, like, incredibly disgusting sex. Mm-hmm. And I was, it was, like, two in the morning, and I'm like, I have to get up and clean up. I cannot stay like this. So I was in the bathroom, and I was cleaning up in front of the mirror, just kind of cleaning up the, the groin area, and Daryl walked in on me. And I'm all, get out! I was, like, so embarrassed. Like, oh, I'm so sorry! Because it's not, I should have just gotten in the shower, but I was doing, like, the whore's bath. Okay, so there's the initial, they hand you, like, the... Dirty tank top. Dead, dead t-shirt or something like that. <laughs> right. And then you do the swipe, right. you know, mm-hmm. and then you go into the bathroom, you pee. And then I usually just wipe pretty good with, like, toilet paper. See, for me, I, I get, like, a washcloth. Like, I if I'm not getting in the shower to clean... Because, see, I'm so prone to UTIs that I'm so, oh. I'm so meticulous post-sex that I will get, like, a washcloth and really do a a decent job cleaning up because I just can't have any it's not I'm not like Catholic weird where I get up immediately after sex and go bathe like it's <laughs> like, dirty <laughs> like in sex in the city yeah He's no like, I'm oh, not like oh, oh. I'm, I'm gonna take it to shower <laughs> yeah I'm not like that but when when the 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 glow has has come and gone and I'm like all right I gotta go pee and then once I'm in there I'm like well I might as well do what I'm doing so I'll clean up but this was early on in our relationship and it was super embarrassing to get caught with a towel in my crotch yeah i get it it was embarrassing especially with the lights on oh I my mean, god and it, when you the know, lights are off it's fine and you know those cheap hotels and their fluorescent lighting it's just oh god, all it's just gritty right. especially if you're naked oh, and it's just, oh. just gritty and ugly it's just really and bad he, he was probably naked and it's just he like was. no it's like it's like when the lights come on at the bar it's oh it is it's after it, it was definitely after last you call. just feel like cockroaches and you, and you see how filthy everything is you're like oh god i just i feel you're disgusting like, you're gross i'm gross we're ugly we're naked <laughs> Ew, it's so bad all right so that's the first one uh here's the second one this one made me laugh i got caught talking to myself which wouldn't have been so bad but i was imitating foghorn leghorn <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! You know, I used to call st- 
Stephanie Foghorn Leghorn? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. Well, I'll sit. Well, I'll sit. <laughs> Just I think it's laugh. because she used to talk so damn much. Well, she, no, she she stuttered. She had a bad <laughs> stutter problem. <laughs> You know what? It was probably dad who of gave her that it name. Of course it was. What an I'll asshole. Say, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, son. Yeah. God. Oh well, then God. I, I'll never repeat that then. Okay. Except for <laughs> except for here on the show. Well, I didn't know. It no. took me a minute to think about why why we would call Actually, her that. And I'm like, no, oh, no, you know no. what? I'm all, it's probably We did dad. not call her Foghorn Leghorn. We called her Porky Pig. Because Porky Pig's the one that stuttered. I believe I, if I I'm recall sure my Warner Falk Brothers cartoon. I don't know. Well, we should reply. We should send her a message. Which name means more <laughs> to you, Foghorn Leghorn or Porky Pig? Which one brings more uh, like word association? Yes. What, if what? I say Foghorn Leghorn, what do you say? <laughs> right, Dad. <laughs> Dad. No, <I'm> <laughs> asshole. Okay. Narcissist. <laughs> okay. I have one more. Normally, I only do two, but I'm doing three today because this one made me really laugh when i was about nine i was pretending that i was a celebrity <laughs> i was a celebrity greeting fans in front of a mirror <laughs> i mean haven't we all accepted the academy of award course. i mean come on i think we did it together as the four of us probably thank you i mean how many times did we do the miss america pageant oh or my something God, like so that many. we used to do our own runway swimsuit competitions everything yeah. we did it all i think we even did the talent competition or the oh, talent we did oh we edition. did edition absolutely i don't know what allison did for hers allison barely part she moderately participated you know what i think allison was the judge oh probably and then we'd always get mad at her for giving us bad scores it was just or ridiculous. she gave us all the same scores because she didn't want to <sighs> i don't you know, know. <laughs> okay i gave you a letter b oh, God. <laughs> allison <laughs> Okay, this one made me laugh because then I do recall accepting my Grammy for my voice. Okay, <laughs> when I was about nine, I was pretending that I was a celebrity greeting fans in front of a mirror. I would have a brief conversation and then lick and slobber all over the mirror, essentially making out with myself as a mirror, but kissing like a dog. Okay, I don't... I, what? They were French kissing the mirror. They were French kissing their own face. Who, wait, who's they? This nine, oh, the person. This person okay, okay, who's okay. telling okay. me the story. My dad walked in. And oh, all, God. All he said was, make sure you clean that mirror. <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? Because you know he probably heard the conversation going on in there. <laughs> well, that's probably why he walked in there, because he wanted to know, what the hell's going on? And then what's you know, that? Like, what's who's, that? Who's she talking to? What is that squeaking sound I'm hearing? <laughs> And then, you know, I do the same thing. If I hear talking, I'm just like, what? Who are they talking to? Yeah. You know, so I'll walk back there Whoa. to make sure nobody's on the phone or something. Right, right. First of all, I actually struggle talking to myself in the mirror, looking at myself, because I'm so critical of my body that I struggle. Oh, but God. but I definitely have done that where I will be holding on to something. And then suddenly I'm like, thank you so much. I'd like to thank all of the nominees. <laughs> We're all so talented, but this really, this has to go to my manager, my team, <laughs> the director. If it wasn't for you for pushing me, I don't know if I would be here today. Thank you, everyone. I always thought I would have to thank my family first yeah. because if I didn't thank them first, I would be afraid that I would forget. Yeah, well, you know, that's the biggest tell when when stars go up there and they forget to thank their significant other. Usually, Usually it's, it's because it's over. Yeah. So yeah, that is true. It's a tell mm. beyond. So, yeah, so I found all three of these hilarious. That is funny. Because we've all done it. And, you know, the whole the whole uh, imitating or pretend. I read several of people who pretended they were blind. At home and blind. when they were kids, yeah, they would say, I always wanted to see if I'd be a good blind person. So I would close my eyes and walk around running into things and realize I wouldn't be a very good blind person. And I'm like, yeah, because it's something you choose, you know, <laughs> you know, you know what it makes me. Re I I'm sure they would never do this in school again, but there was a day and I don't remember why we did it, but there was a day where I think it was sixth grade. Mm -hmm everyone was assigned a disability <laughs> and what? you were either in a wheelchair 
you were deaf or you were blind. I remember that. <laughs> and I don't know what the purpose was. I don't know if it was like a sensitivity training or yeah. something like that, which I'm sure no one would ever do now. But no, there's too many disabilities now. I think I was blind and you have to wear a, so head, I, you have to wear a thing. I had to wear a blindfold yeah. and someone had to lead me around the playground, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I couldn't see. I do remember that training as kids. But um, mm hmm. I don't yeah I'm just like oh, I'm trying to think what the what a strange what the lesson what the lesson was <laughs> what a strange experiment you know I wonder if the teacher said hey imagine filming that and then having it on YouTube this today everybody <laughs> I do recall everybody wanted to be the wheelchair person of course, of course they did everyone because... wanted to have the wheels <laughs> it's true all right all right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Like Jamie said, we were recording a little bit early, so hopefully we had good results from the UFC fight. Which we will discuss next episode. Next episode, we'll discuss that. We'll discuss camping and whatever else is going on in life. Yes. For your shopping, please visit UglyTruth.com. Click on the Amazon button. And then also go to lipandclip.com and get your uh, makeup, skincare. They have jewelry stuff, which I actually really like. I'm going to get that because I got some new clothes and now I need some jewelry. Well, there you go. So I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, have a fabulous rest of your week and we'll see you on Sunday.